What you're looking at right now is the crowd at the very first American style fast food burger joint in Italy in the early 1980s. Was it a McDonald's? Mm, nope. But the opening of Italy's first McDonald's triggered Italians so much that there were street demonstrations, town hall debates and intellectuals signing manifestos warning of the destruction of Italian identity. The anti-fast food demonstrators even demanded Clint Eastwood to become the mayor of Rome and famed designer Valentino, with his studio just steps away from McDonald's, even feared his clothes might be affected by the stench of fried stuff Americans call food so much so that he filled a lawsuit against the fast food company. But okay, okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves just yet. For now, let me take you on this ultimate historical trip of culinary delights and American fast food in the land of pasta and pizza. In the 80s, people in Italy just wanted to forget the previous, rather nasty decade made of violence, terrorism and student unrest. In America, Reagan was president. In Milan, there were American psycho, Patrick Bateman-style guys popping in and out of office buildings and overall, people were simply looking for the quick money to spend on clothes, drinks and a considerable amount of the white stuff. It is in that period of time that in Italy, in Milan to be precise, a new way of conceiving the restaurant industry arrives. Burghi was an Italian fast food chain founded in 1982 by a former Italian supermarket chain called GS. The beginning of Burghi was difficult and already three years after the opening in 1985, the chain was sold to the Cremonini Group, an Italian multinational food company. Thanks to the Cremonini Group also providing the meat needed to make the burgers, the fast food chain was able to offer high quality burgers at a very competitive price. Incidentally, Vincenzo Cremonini, the son of the Cremonini Group president, is believed to be the brainchild behind the Burghi success story. Then only 25 years old and with nothing more but a degree in business administration from Boston University in hand, Vincenzo was handed the keys to the fast food venture. My father told me, we got a new company. Burghi, which is based in Milan. Since you're done studying, you're going to manage it. At first, that was hardly a favor, because my only proven ability was having eaten hamburgers in the United States for three and a half years. At the beginning, Burghi was in six locations, scattered throughout the city center and surrounding areas of Milan. The one in Piazza San Babila became the beating heart of the cultural movement of the Paninari, the Italian yuppies if you so will. The young people of the Milanese upper class, uninterested in politics but with an obsession for designer clothing and the cliches conveyed by cinema and commercial television. And yes, Paninari actually comes from the word panino, which literally means bread. I really don't know what those people were thinking at the time. Too much of the white stuff, I suppose. Anyway. It is really funny because those guys were actually the first hyper beasts. It's a shame that there was no social media back then, because all these guys had going for them was to flex their expensive clothes. Let's take a quick look at this how much is your outfit worth video from the 1980s in front of the local boot. I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it. Sì, le scarpe su di fashion, degli stivali americani, americani sì, ovviamente, non certo libici. Allora, poi americanino, classici pantaloni da paninaro, poi Montclair, giubbotto, eh? cintura del ciarro e una camicia, diciamo, sulle 50-60 mila di quelle che... Poi c'è in più la bronzatura, sì, che, è che è necessaria. Sì, diciamo di sì. So. Burghi will remain the main brand of fast food in Italy until 1995 when it will be purchased by McDonald's which will eliminate the brand. But as a matter of fact this wasn't Burghi's fault. Rather it was its parent company, the Cremonini Group, that was in trouble due to debt accumulated in the 1990s. In 11 years we created a company that produced profits with 96 operating premises. A success story, a very strong brand. We were the only nation in Europe where international competitors were and remained second best. 
In fact, the gap was getting wider and wider. Speaking about McDonald's, the first McDonald's opened in 1985 in my hometown of Bolzano in the Alps of northern Italy near the border with Switzerland and Austria. Shortly after, in 1986, the second McDonald's opened in the center of Rome. The opening of the first McDonald's in Rome was perceived as an insult to the older generation, amongst them many famous songwriters and actors. In the days surrounding the opening there were street demonstrations, town hall debates and intellectuals signing manifestos warning of the destruction of Italian identity. Many of them held up signs demanding in English, Clint Eastwood, you should be our mayor. The reason the movie star, then mayor of Carmel, a small California town, had banned any fast food chain from opening there. For those who wanted to safeguard the Italian identity, the savior was none other than Dirty Harry. It was the designer Valentino Garavani who showed the strongest opposition with a more palpable excuse than the defense of patriotic values or the protection of a historic area. According to him, the clothes in his studio began to smell fried. Thus, Valentino took legal action against McDonald's and demanded the closure of the restaurant on the grounds that it caused in his shop a noticeable and constant noise and an unbearable smell of fried food that fouls the air. As a result, McDonald's was forced to renovate to improve ventilation and exhaust. 32 years later, the luxury house and the teenager's favorite restaurant coexist in the same square. According to many still reluctant Italians, if this McDonald's remains profitable, it is thanks to American tourists. Needless to say that the anti-fast food movement lost the battle against McDonald's, given that the company operates over 600 restaurants in Italy today. Burger King opened its first restaurant in Italy in Milan in 1999 and just 15 years later celebrated the opening of its 100th Italian restaurant. As of today there are more than 175 Burger King restaurants on the peninsula. Starbucks famously took 47 years to open a store in Italy, partly due to the sentiment of its founder Howard Schultz that the American coffee franchise would not be able to succeed in the land of espresso. And in a way he was right. The first Starbucks, which opened in 2018 in a 2000 square foot store in Milan, was a success. But Starbucks charges $1.80 for its espresso, almost double what it costs at any coffee shop in the country. So yeah, four years later there are only 17 Starbucks stores in Italy with two having already closed down again due to a lack of business. And apparently, and this shocked me, there are over 20 Domino's but no Pizza Hut in Italy. KFC actually opened in Naples already in the 1970s, but they closed it down after only a short time. Until 2014, only two KFC restaurants were in Italy. But since they were on American military bases for a long time, they were only accessible to the US military and the people that worked there. But as of today, there are over 50 KFC restaurants in Italy. Other than that, fast food chains present in Italy that must be mentioned are Five Guys with more than 5 restaurants, Subway with just under 20 restaurants. Unfortunately, Italy has no Taco Bell, Popeyes, Wendy's, In-N-Out, Chick-fil-A or Chipotle. Italy has also its fair share of fast food restaurants, such as Roadhouse, which is actually owned by Vincenzo Cremonini, the father of Burghi or the Burgets chain, which bills itself as the successor of the Burgi restaurant chain. I could go on and on and name many others like Alice Pizza or Spontini. Not to mention that you can get pizza by the slice, huge panini and deep fried snacks literally on every corner across Italy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little history lesson on how fast food made its way to Italy. Anyway, 
If you guys did enjoy this video, please make sure to smash the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. There will be many more videos on all things Italy in the coming weeks and months. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and help me make this project happen. Also, any suggestions, ideas and requests are always greatly appreciated. Be sure to leave them in the comments. And that's all for today. See you in the next one, guys. Ciao.